what is going on youtube read boy on twitch back again with another best settings video for you to use on console we are on ps5 best console player in the world and we are back with a new updating settings video for you to use you guys are lost on what to do for your settings if you're looking for stuff if you got want to make minor changes copy your favorite console player this is the video for you i've got you with everything breaking down why i use things why i do what i do why certain things are the way they are and giving you the best tips and tricks you can do to be the best you that you can be so anyways let's get right into the video we play for anybody who does not know we play on bumper jumper tactical l1 bumper jumper tactical i started playing on this way back in black ops 3 in the jetpack cods when i could not possibly convince my parents to spend 200 300 on a controller now i have a beautiful scuff controller and you can use code read if you want to get one of your own that's code reid at the link in the description make sure you check that out but if you cannot fathom possibly spending 200 300 on a controller just to be good at a video game bumper jumper tactical is the way for you even with the scuff controller even with the paddles on the back i still plan this the main goal that you never ever want to uh, deviate from you never want to take your thumb off the thumbstick you always want to have your thumb on the thumbstick that is the most important thing in warzone in call of duty in general always being able to aim no matter what you're doing so this allows you to do this this allows you to jump jump shot and slide um slide cancel all that without ever moving your thumb off the thumbstick you jump with l1 you slide by pushing in the right thumbstick i slide using my paddle but i ha i could have if my scuff broke for some reason i had to use a basic default controller i would have absolutely no problem pushing it in my right thumbstick to slide cancel to drop shot to jump shot i would still be just as good as i am now with the scuff i just like the scuff better i play Play on with controller vibration on almost anybody anywhere is always going to tell you to turn that off i have never played any game i've never picked up a controller that does not have vibration enabled i can't i don't like it i can't shoot straight with it i, I don't like the way it feels i've had to send back this is more uh back when i had like a default ps4 controller the only thing wrong with a controller was the vibration stopped working and i had to go buy a new controller because i could not shoot straight with the controller doesn't provide some kind of physical feedback while i'm shooting so my vibration is cranked up to 100 uh anybody anywhere is going to tell you to turn that down to zero turn it off uh the dead zones ideally you want your dead zones to be the minimums to be as low as you can get them to be if your stick drifts just a little bit one thing you got to realize is there's almost never a situation when that is going to impact you in a gunfight that is never going to be detrimental obviously if you know you set your controller down and you're slowly spinning on your own it's goofy it's pointless but that's never going to harm you if you set your controller down and don't touch it and you start doing 360s and you're spinning in circles real fast trying out for phase in 2010 that's not ideal that might be time for a new controller um one thing i would say is don't change your dead zones you want to get it as low as you can i've got my minimums at three max maximums at 99 and yeah that is my controller doesn't drift again that's a scuff controller top quality really good controller not going to do that but yeah if your controller does drift just a little bit even on that setting i still wouldn't be too worried about that you do not want to change your dead zones up down left and right you don't want to be doing that because that's why people feel like their aim is so inconsistent some days compared to others and then they go and they change their settings to try and counter it you don't want to do that you don't want to be changing your settings left and right that's not good for you that's going to mess with your muscle memory pick a setting three dead zone is what i'm rocking right now is the minimum 399 pick it keep it leave it at that uh the l2 r2 button dead zone so on the scuff i do have fancy triggers where the farthest i have to push them down they, they act like a uh, a mouse click if you will they um respond ridiculously fast so it is essentially the same thing as me having the button dead zone and zero uh, if you do not have that if you have a default controller still turn this thing all the way down so that way your triggers can be as responsive and reactive as possible that is the controller settings there on the aim settings um i always tell people you, you know, sensitivity is different depending on who you are and what you want and what you want to be good at compared to other things. I always say if you are trying to be the best at the game that you can possibly be, 10 is the highest max sensitivity you should want to go. 5 is the lowest bare minimum setting you want to go. Obviously, the lower you go, if you go to a 2 sensitivity, you're going to be able to make those super fine-tuned adjustments really, really easily. Your long-range aim is going to be really good. If you go too low, your close-range aim is going to fall off a cliff. It's not going to be good. You're not going to be able to track and keep up with people moving quickly close to you. So that's why I say there's a minimum that you shouldn't go with, and then the opposite, the, uh, the inverse, if you will, of that applies if you're too high then you're going to be able to track people close range very easily but long range you're going to look like your windshield wiper and left and right you're not going to be able to keep your aim on your target so anywhere between five at the minimum 10 at the maximum is somewhere where you want to go people playing on max sensitivity yeah it looks flashy yeah you can 360 you can spin fast you can turn quickly but that is hurting your aim way more than it is helping you one thing that I learned almost 10 years ago is it is way more important to hit every single bullet 
in every gunfight 100% of the time than it is to occasionally, rarely, once a day have the chance of turning on somebody. Yeah, 90 degrees snapping on somebody instantly is nice, it's fun, it's satisfying, but so is hitting every single bullet of every single you know time that you shoot at somebody and having people on YouTube comments and TikTok calling you a cheater because your aim is really good because you have the read boy on Twitch sensitivity settings. Anyways, further into that, um, the sensitivity multipliers, we get more into the custom per zoom uh, levels. We don't mess with anything else up until then, uh, except for the third person sensitivity multiplier. So when I'm flying out of the plane, I can turn and look left and right as fast as possible so I can get that info on people flying in next to me. Uh, ground vehicle, same thing. I turned that one up a little bit, just that way when I'm driving around in a car, I could turn faster and see more of my surroundings while I'm in that third person perspective. Vertical aim axis, all these are standards. Tactical stance, for anybody that doesn't know what tactical stance is, when you aim down sight, press down on the D-pads, how you turn your gun like sideways. Ways, sideways and shoot it like that all tactical and stuff um it's like a combination between aim down sights and hip fire it's like right in the middle so my tack stance is right in the middle of what my ads sense and my default 1.0 sense is 0.9 as uh, we're rocking on that it's a nice middle ground again between hip firing and aim down sights my response curve type is linear now i always tell people there is not one of these standard linear dynamic that is better than the other there's not any of these that is actually you know the best it's more about you and how how your muscle memory and your hand-eye coordination, there's some nerd science stuff in there somewhere, how your brain reacts to it. I say you try all these out, feel out what you like best and what feels the best to you and stick with it. Practice again, again, go through all these settings, figure out your settings, stick with that. Don't change your settings unless some update comes in that actually does change something and makes something better or worse. Stick with these settings, practice that. The more you play with that, the more your muscle memory is gonna get built, the better you're gonna get. I am playing on linear, that's just how my brain works. <laughs> I like the way linear feels. Um, I've tried dynamic, I've tried standard. I don't like them as much. I don't like the way they feel. Um, so with linear, I don't think the aim response curve slope actually matters at all. I think it's all just a linear straight line. I think this more affects the other ones, but I don't really mess with this one too much. I just kind of kept it right default where it's at. The custom sensitivity per zoom, this is where you get into more of the fine tune aiming where you can go crazy with the settings and the customization. Basically anything five times and below all the way to the low zooms, I'm on the 0.8 multiplier. Anything higher than that, more like your sniper scopes, I'm on the 0.9 times multiplier. This allows me to move a little bit faster when trying to keep up with sniping uh, for these, you know, for a faster moving closer range target so I can hit those quick scopes a little bit easier. Aim assist, aim assist. Ah, yes. I don't know how that got turned on on its own. I don't use aim assist anymore. Aim assist is for cheaters. Only, uh, only cheaters use aim assist. I think I had to factory reset my PS5 the other day, actually, because of some glitch that happened. So I had to factory reset it. That must have gotten turned on by accident. I didn't even notice. Um, only cheaters use aim assist now. Um, it's basically just aimbot. Um, so if any of your favorite streamers out there are too scared to turn off aim assist, if you ask them to or something like that, they just, you know, they know they don't want to. It's because they know that they're, they, they need the game to aim for them. They know that if the game is not doing all the work and aiming for them, their aim bot assist isn't, you know, shooting the bad guy while they just don't touch the thumbstick, then they know they're nothing. So a lot of your favorite streamers know that they aren't, uh, aren't going to be able to compete with the real demons that don't use aim assist. So we turn that off. No big deal anymore. If we did have it on, we did use the default setting though oh the motion sensor we don't mess with that onto the gameplay settings automatic tactical sprint now that slide canceling is back in war zone you want the setting on this is so important i know they just broke reloading a couple days ago it was broken for a while it's it's still a little bit messed up um automatic tactical sprint is still the vibes you need this to be able to have the max movement to be able to outplay people um to be the movement god demon that you can be uh, that automatic tactical sprint is something you definitely want on slide maintain sprint that is a setting that you want turned off we've turned that off that's helped the overall fluidity of the movement that's kind of helped uh, reduce the amount of dead slides that we do uh, auto move forward off single tab run so right now right now i don't know if this is going to change in a new update uh, sometime in the future or not if you playing on automatic tactical sprint if you tap forward with single tap run on it cancels your reload normal the normal way to cancel a reload right now is to ta is to yy if you yy you cancel a reload this is another way to do it can mess you up if you're unaware of that or if you're not used to it can also help you if you know you don't want to take your thumb off the thumbstick to yy real quick or if you don't play claw or anything like that um this can help you if you get caught reloading and need to cancel it real quick uh personal preference on if you if that's worth it or not to you know your tactical sprint will cancel a reload if you if you click in on that as of right now 
Uh, otherwise, if they if they change that, then that setting doesn't really matter at all if you're playing on auto tactical sprint. If you don't play on auto tactical sprint for some reason, if you don't want to ATS, uh, single tap run is definitely way more beneficial. There's no point in sprinting forward. You want to be tactical sprinting at all times. There's never a point when you want to sprint but not tactical sprint. This is going to both save your left thumbstick and your left thumb um, from sprinting in. You're not going to have to push the button twice. This is going to make you be able to be faster with the movement and you know help out your hands as well. Um, all these mantles, you want these turned off. Um, you will notice when watching me there are times when i struggle struggle to climb onto rocks or climb in the windows or something like that that is way 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 better than accidentally mantling in the middle of a gunfight you never want to lose a gunfight because you mantled on something when you weren't trying to mantle on it so all these mantle settings are turned off um i no longer dolphin dive i've turned off that option i am so sick and tired of dolphin diving when i'm not trying to do it they finally made it so that way slide only actually works properly and you still don't dolphin dive the movement feels so much better and so much more fluid like this um it does suck not being able to dolphin dive off a ledges sometimes to get that extra distance but it is so worth it to never ever ever dolphin dive in a gunfight when you don't want to so slide only is a setting we're playing on now Paramat parachute automatic behavior you want that turned off you do not ever want to um you don't want to pull your parachute 30 feet in the sky when you can pull it five feet in the sky you this can literally allow you to get to the ground faster you are going to break your ankles it's going to happen it happens to me it happens to other players it happens all the time um especially as you're getting used to having this setting on it's worth it though it's worth it to get to the ground a grab the gun and turn around and shoot the guy who still has parachute automatic behavior on he's still just sitting there floating in the sky for a free kill so it's definitely worth it to have on sprinting door bash you want that on um anything else here that's useful or important so another setting um this was from back when we did use aim assist we learned about this setting um if you turn if you mount up which you should mount if for anybody doesn't know when you mount onto a wall it reduces the amount of recoil on your gun but you can't strafe which if you can't move while aimed on sights, that is going to reduce the amount of rotational aim assist you're going to get. Some some extra aim bot that you're missing out on. If you put weapon mount exit delay off, if you mount up onto a wall and you can still move your thumbstick, so you're still activating that rotational aim assist, um, and you're still getting that extra you know aim bot. Uh, but you're not moving. You're not canceling the mount because the setting's turned off. All you have to do to unmount is to let go of the aimed on sights button. So it's an even better way to get even more accurate while mounted up to make mounting even more overpowered. Uh, again, you can just move your thumbstick whatever direction you want uh, while mounted and it won't exit it. So that is definitely beneficial. Prioritize interact. This will literally allow you to grab guns off the ground faster. You definitely want to grab guns, grab loot, grab, grab ammo, streaks, whatever. Everything off the ground. You can literally pick it up faster by using the setting. So you definitely want that to be turned on. Armor plate behavior. You want that to be apply all. You don't want to unzip your shirt, put in the plate, zip your shirt back up, and just do it again three different times. You don't ever want to do that. You want to just unzip it, put them all three in at once. Uh, this way you can just hold triangle and then go back to putting your thumb back on the thumbstick. Um, anything else here that's useful? manual fire behavior so i know a lot of people put this on some clickbait youtubers and tiktokers out there told people that if you turn the setting on you can fire a burst gun you know faster you don't have to tap it you just hold the trigger and it shoots basically full auto while in burst like yeah that might be a thing but it is nowhere near worth it when you shoot your starting pistol significantly slower with this setting on the core 45 that you spawn in with or whatever pistol you shoot it so slow with this hold setting on that you are just going to lose uh gunfights off the drop like crazy it is no Nowhere near worth having the setting on so make sure you switch it to press make sure you're playing on press that way you just keep shooting keep tap tapping to shoot uh kimbo behavior this is nice right here this works perfectly with the new model 1887 uh conversion kit for the lockwood if you shoot one either either side the aim button or the shoot button if you press either one of those you shoot both the akimbos at the same time uh basically just allows you to shoot faster this is definitely worth it so i run that now when rocking the akimbo shotguns or any akimbo gun rather um anything else here nope that is it for all of our controller settings i know there's a lot i know there's a, a lot of stuff in there so let me just get a real quick break for hydration let's go slide on into the graphics setting i got pretty much everything turned off i got a bunch of stuff turned off i think there actually might be some new settings in here compared to last time and we'll see let's get into that uh on demand texture streaming i got that turned off on off i don't notice a difference in this um so i don't really care about it all the blurs you want these turned off motion blur off weapon motion blur film grain depth of field everything that makes the game blurrier or grainier you don't want that fidelity fx um i've turned it on i've turned it off 150 i don't notice a difference on that that doesn't make that big of a difference either so i've just got that turned off it doesn't matter to me um eco mode doesn't matter to me i've got that turned off as well uh, 120 hertz i actually had to play the other day a couple days ago i had to play all day on the ps4 version of the game again the, the whole factory reset thing because the game 
broke and would let me start. So I played on the PS4 version. I was on 60 hertz, 1080p, felt and looked the exact same as the 1440, 120 hertz um, that I play on now. I played on it for a year, went back to 60, did absolutely fine, no problems, didn't feel any different, didn't look any different. It's for sure on, it for sure works, it's just not that big of a difference. Um, but we do have that turned on because we have the option too, so why not? We have recently increased my FOV from 99 to 110. Only reason why I did this is to attempt to attract more viewers to make more so to make the TikTok crayon eating moron crowd um think my movement is faster because they genuinely think that lower fov means you run slower um and i was i was just getting sick and tired of explaining it to stupid motherfuckers we've increased our fov to 110 that's about as high as i'm willing to go that's the highest you should go anywhere from 100 to 110 is like the sweet spot nowadays again any if you play if you still play on 120 fov if you just got this fov slide and you're like yeah let me crank it all the way up i can see so much stuff you are hurting yourself you are hurting yourself more than you're helping yourself turn this setting down again 110 to be the highest that i go turn this setting down and you will notice that you will get better at the game you will notice you'll win a lot more 1v1 gunfights and just overall be better so again that's just because you you can go all the way up to the highest number same as your sensitivity doesn't mean that you should the ads field of view you want that on affected weapon field of view you want that wide so your gun takes up as as little room on your screen as possible third person field of view this one doesn't matter in gunfights so you want this one as high as possible vehicle field, field of view same thing you want you want to be able to see as much as possible when you're not trying to shoot at people uh your camera movements you want to shake down as, as low as possible at least 50 percent you want your camera to not move very much inverted flashbang the most important best setting in the game right here when you get flash banged rather than the power of the sun being shined through your monitor and burning a hole in your retinas this is going to save your eyesight turn this on when you get flash banged your screen goes pitch black instead of pitch white absolutely love the setting i've been asking for this for so long it will the first couple times if you just turn this on it will confuse you it will make you think that your game just crashed when your screen randomly goes goes black out of nowhere because you get flash banged but get used to this and it is super beneficial to your fucking corny brightness that's more specific to your to you know your monitor and your settings mine's at 51 i can also adjust the settings on my monitor or you can do it on your tv as well same thing with the safe area that's specific to your <clears throat> your screen onto the audio settings for those of you that do not know, soundbar. Soundbar is the audio cheat code. For some reason, soundbar is the best setting to run to be able to hear footsteps in Warzone. I don't understand why, but it is beautiful. I do love it. Um, master volume. So I have my master volume set to 100. I have not experimented with this too, while sober yet. I did it once while I was drunk. I don't remember what the results were because, you know, drunk. Um, you could try this if you want. I cannot vouch for it yet. I still need to try it out myself. Somebody recommended that you turn your master game volume down, like to 30. He says like 30, 20 something, 40, below 50. He said, turn your master game volume way down and then turn your headset volume way up. I have no idea if this works or not, but they said it's way better for hearing footsteps. It helps a lot if you're like me, you have a mix amp, you have a mixer to adjust different audio levels of your party, your game, stuff like that, um, to be able to fine tune things. But they said, yeah, turn the master vo game volume down, turn your headset volume up. So I'm going to try. I don't know. I'm not trying it um, yet. I haven't tried it yet. I will. I will try to do that at some point and get back to you guys. Gameplay music volume got that turned down. We we need to be able to hear footsteps, unfortunately, in this game. Got to be able to hear footsteps and the sound of music drowning that out is not something that you really want to deal with. Dialogue volume. The announcer in your ear does give good information you know enemy uav precision or mortar come in enemy dropping and stuff like that you do need to know that you do want to know that information so you do not want this guy overpowering the sound of the footsteps so turn him down whatever number fits perfectly for you that works i've got it set to 60 so you still hear the information he's saying but it's not overpowering the sound of footsteps effects volumes we got that cranked up to 100 uh music volume that's just during the cutscenes. that doesn't matter war tracks if you got this down to zero, you're missing out. You're missing out on some fire music, bro. Mr. Right Side, La Chona, some Suavemente, good music playing in the cars, especially if they drive by you. It can create some hilarious prox chat type moments if you've got this turned on. So I would definitely recommend you turn that on. Uh, voice chat volume. I actually just got factory reset. 40 is what I keep it on. You want to be able to hear people in game chat and prox chat, but you don't want them to be so loud. They're overpowering the sound of footsteps. For anybody that does not know, I have my game chat mic to, ha to have the worst possible settings that you can possibly have just because I find it so funny when I unmute my mic and people tell me my mic sucks. This is what they hear in game chat every time. Yo, mic check, testing. Yo, is this thing on? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. 
it's really bad really bad i find it hilarious i think it's so funny whenever people i unmute my mic and they go yo turn your mic off your mic sucks good stuff good stuff right there um we got our subtitles turned off um war tracks is past here we got that turned on hit marker sound effect on classic um we're almost done almost done on the last part the interface settings uh the only really important thing here is the color customization we've got the color filter on our game this might be why you feel like my game looks a little bit better on ps5 than yours does uh, my color filter is set to filter 2 the target is both both the menu and the world in game um and then the intensity is at 80 whatever number you want to go with works perfectly um so i have that on and then i also have a have a filter on you know obs that's recording all this and that shows my stream to increase the saturation slightly and to increase the sharpness just a very very small amount just to make the stream pop a little bit more to make things look a bit a little bit better for you guys than they look like on my screen uh the mini map shape you want this to be a square you can literally see more if you look right there at those two pictures you can legitimately see more of the mini map you can see extra corners and stuff that you wouldn't be able to see with a circle so a square mini map is the vibes um anything else here crosshairs if especially I, mean, I have these on no matter what but especially if you feel like you want to get better with your centering if you want to improve your centering um the crosshairs you want these on the center dot especially so that way you know where the dead center of your screen is um this helps a lot again for helping you improve centering just focus on where that dot is and keep it in the right spots at the right times um one thing right here static yeah static right here so that way the crosshairs don't bob and weave while you're running around the map some people don't like that they don't like the way they look so i've got it set to static um hit markers you want those on for sure um anything else here important um, I've got my server latency and packet loss on so that way you can see if it's you know if it's the game lagging if it's a server lagging if it's you so that way you can know if the game just feels like it's laggy sometimes turn on that packet loss if you see a number up there that's generally not a good thing you can see your ping to the servers as well as well as you can see how much day it is I've turned this on recently to let people know hopefully to mitigate the amount of people you know accusing the VPNs and all that stuff when they can see that it's 8 a.m. that I'm queuing into a game and those are bot lobby hours so we'll see if that actually works I don't think it will um other than that that is everything you made it we made it through all the settings video if there's something that you think i've got set wrong or something you want me to try for you let me know in the comments um other than that don't forget to like the video i appreciate that that helps out a ton don't forget to subscribe um for all the best tips and tricks and class setups and settings and console everything you could ask for we've got them here don't forget to follow me over on twitch where we are live just about every day all day all the time uh, other than that you guys all have yourselves a blessed one